Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today, I'm at the Mary Hill Research Farm for BASF with BASF's Rob Miller. Rob, how's it going? Great. How are you doing, Bernard? Uh, it's pretty awesome here. Uh, it is mid-April. It's about 14 degrees. We're out in the field. Um, and let, let's start there. We want to talk about weed control and what we've got to tackle this spring. Um, Rob, you've been out, out and about. Um, one of the warmest winters on record. What does that mean for weed control this spring? Yeah, with that warm winter, we're seeing a lot of those winter annuals and perennial weeds already start to wake up. Just like the wheat crop has woken up, so have those uh, winter annual weeds, especially chickweed. I always say that chickweed is that nice indicator weed. It's widespread across the province. It's already starting to flower and it's nice, basically carpet in some of those fields. So if the chickweed's growing, you know that the other weeds are growing. The, the shepherd's purse, the flea bane, the dandelions, they're starting to wake up mm. as well. Hey, you know, when we look around here, we see a lot of trash. You had a yep. record, you know, corn crop last year in Ontario. And what does that mean? I see a lot of things sort of hiding and peeking here. Yeah, so this field was actually harvested a little bit later. It was in November, like a lot of the fields in, in Ontario, just with that record corn crop, record trash. That's where a lot of these winter annuals are hiding underneath that trash as well and we didn't have the opportunity to do any type of fall tillage whether it was with a high-speed vertical disc or even some type of uh, chisel plow in these fields we're gonna have to use a lot higher water volumes use multiple modes of effective action because coverage is going to be a challenge right. this year. the thing about uh, planting this year is you're gonna have a long window right and you're, uh, you talk about I guess you know early weed control how effective it can be especially when it's cold yeah, so it really depends on the crop that you have destined for that field. So this particular field, we're gonna be going into, into soybeans, but any of those fields that you know, might be destined for IP soybeans or dry beans, we're still about six weeks away from planting dry beans. And if the weeds are this big, there's not many options to take out some of those winter annuals. So things like chickweed are gonna naturally dry off and, and die off because they've already gone into reproductive mode, but it's the, the Danny lions, the sow thistles, the Canada flea bane that once you start planting those crops, there's not really, really many options. So the one thing is with that situation, since we are a few weeks away, making sure that we control them when they're smaller and actively growing. The, these winter annuals, it's middle of April. Once any type of herbicide you apply in mid-April, it's gonna be really slow. So we wanna make sure that we set those proper expectations. It's not actively growing yet, but they still have woken up. So it's gonna take about two to three weeks to actually see some type of symptomology compared to when we usually apply these in May, we get much faster activity. Talk about, I guess, uh, some pre-emerge strategies here. Now, like, that window is pretty long. If you're planting, you know, mid, late April, early May, before you know, you know, things get really active. Um, how close should we be trying to time our pre-emerge before emergence? Yeah, so it really depends on you know, what type of crop you're growing. We get a lot of questions lately that, you know, hopefully we can try and get the corn in the next couple of weeks. Crop canopy by far is your best means of weed control. So if you plant the crop now in April and then spray your soil applied residual herbicide, you're asking a lot of that herbicide because the, the seed's gonna sit in the ground for two to three weeks uh, before it starts to come out of the ground and canopy. And the soil applied residual herbicides really only last say four to six weeks yeah. of, of adequate control, depending on the environmental conditions. So it's better to, you know, with your soil applied residual herbicides, you're going after more annual weeds. They haven't really started to germinate yet. If you can try to time it and wait a little bit longer so that it's not really exposed and sitting on the soil surface for two to three weeks uh, before that seed comes up and get the canopy closure. That's really the ideal thing with soil applied residual herbicides. You're just buying enough time to get to canopy closure. But and you want to get that slow. spray down. You don't yeah. want to cut it too close and miss it, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's better to get that uh, soil applied residual herbicide down, especially when you're dealing with some of these uh, resistant weeds, uh, the water hemp, and even something like a lamb's quarters, ragweed, those weeds, it's really important to to get that soil applied. So that's better than not spraying at all. Mm. But just be prepared. You might have to come in a little bit earlier than you're used to if you apply it a little bit earlier. So say if it's a corn crop or even IP soybeans, you might have to come in more at that first trifolia if it's soybeans or even four to five leaf stage corn. So you might have to come in a couple weeks earlier to clean everything up prior to that canopy closure. Right, hey, let's talk about uh, scouting here. Time to get out and scout. Some of the things you're seeing here and some observations. Uh, South thistle. 
South thistle is one of those weeds, especially in IP soybeans, that uh, during our speaking circuit across the across this past winter, we're starting to get a lot of comments, and it's really starting to uh, be a challenge. And with the high-speed disc that we're using more, uh, it's it's really adapted to our cultural practices. So uh, when you take that high-speed disc, it really just chops that rhizome into one or one or two and just multiplies those growing points. So those patches are actually getting bigger and bigger. And with something like a sow thistle, it usually takes a three to five year plan. One application is not just gonna wipe out everything. You gotta look at this as a as a full system approach, just uh, and manage those those patches. You're just looking at reducing the size of those patches of sow thistle. Yeah. Hey, let's talk Canada fleabane. You've got some here. Um, always, you know, about multiple mo modes of action here. Yep, regardless of which herbicide technology you're using in soybeans, the IPs, E3s, or the Extend technology, you always want to make sure you have two effective modes of action. And we generally see better activity before the flea bane starts to bolt. So with these temperatures, with this warmer winter, we're going to start to see uh, that flea bane, the ones that germinate in the fall, start to bolt a uh, very quickly. Once it starts to bolt, it becomes a challenge to, mm. to manage. And if you're an IP soybeans, there's really nothing that you can do uh, to apply it once you've once the beans have come up. So that's where you want to be proactive in some of those fields. In some of those fields, you might want to do an earlier application now uh, just to try to manage that, especially if you do have heavy pressure. Yeah. Hey, my friend, Peter Johnson's been out walking fields. He's seen some Whitlow grass um, and he, he's never seen it there before. What's happened? Yeah, we've, we've seen that here too at, at our research farm. The Whitlow grass is actually starting to flower. So very similar to uh, chickweed. It's one of those indicator weeds, it tends to flower a little bit earlier in the season. Uh, Whitlow grass is not a grass at all. It actually uh, actually gets misdiagnosed by a can of flea bane because it does have similar hair, uh, similar uh, rosette and hairs, but it is much different. And we can uh, definitely show that the uh, the flea bane has a few more serrated leaves and hairy plants mm -hmm. versus the Whitlow grass. This time of year, it has a uh, white flower on it, so that's how you can really distinguish the difference. Final one before I move on here: bluegrass. Is something we've seen more and more in recent years. Yeah, generally the, the trend the last few years is we've seen a lot more bluegrass. So there's annual bluegrass and there's also rough stock bluegrass. For the most part across the province, it's really just the annual bluegrass. And generally speaking, like five years ago, we we're like, okay, well we see it more on heavier soils. Now you're seeing it on the loam and uh, the Mary Hill Research farm we're more of a, a loam a sandy loam and we're starting to see it show up as well so that was one of the weeds that we started to see even in december with the warmer temperatures starting to creep in from the fields and we're starting to see it widespread and that one has really adapted to some of our cultural practices uh, it usually germinates in the fall usually after that glyphosate application some of the uh the residual herbicides uh, are not really as effective on it the really the only one that would have activity on it from a residual standpoint would be azidua mm -hmm. uh, group 15 but the other group 15 team products generally don't have as much activity on it so that is one of those weeds that if it really starts to take off you're going to get yeah. that carpet and it's not going to allow the soil to dry mm -hmm. out and it just works up in a lot of clumps so definitely keep in mind keep that in mind especially if you are planning on doing any tillage mm -hmm. final question for you and that is you know hey we are seeing some some dandelion starting to flower here. It's mid-April. You know, from a strategy perspective, you know, what should growers be thinking here, you know, as we go uh, over the next couple of weeks? So we do have some situations where the, we actually did do a fall burn down. We didn't use a high enough rate. We're starting to see the, the, the dandelion still starting to survive. Uh, those really large dandelions, once it starts to go into reproductive mode, it's really tough to take down. So we want to make sure that we set the proper expectations. The fall is by far the best time to control it. So make sure you have a plan this fall. But this spring, you got to make sure you set the proper mm -hmm. expectations. So the high speed discs, uh, they're really, they're going to just kind of slice it. They're not really going to take it out. Um, but that's where you want to make sure you get it, uh, your burn downs on prior to uh, the beans coming up and before they start flowering, if at all possible. Well, hey, great stuff. Uh, Rob Miller here at BASF, the Mary Hill uh, Research Farm. Thanks for the invite, sir. We'll see you during the season. Yep, thanks very much for having me.